Welcome to another season of Breaking Bread, and we're starting off right at Father Jamie's Parish, Mary Queen of Heaven, so stay tuned. Welcome to the first episode of another season of Breaking Bread, and I'm so excited. This is season three for those of you who are counting, and according to Breaking Bread tradition, we are starting off right here at Mary Queen of Heaven, Father Jamie's Parish. So let's go inside, see what he's been up to, and maybe even do a little cooking. You ready? Let's go. So we're gonna start this episode off in one of my favorite kitchens in all of Brooklyn, Monsignor Jamie's Kitchen. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, right here at Mary Queen of Heaven. And this is it with season three of Breaking Bread. Can you believe it? I cannot believe how quickly time has gone by. I know, I know, I'm so excited. And I've been getting a lot of great feedback about the show. Right? People love you and they love the places that we've been going well, to. Well, they love you too, Kathy, I have to say. <laughs> Everywhere I go, like people stop me. Hey, that show, don't you do some that show? Yeah, hey, how's Kathy? Yeah, she's doing great. And people say, <laughs> to be Housefather Jamie, or now Monsignor Jamie. Yes, a lot has happened since the last season. That's heard, right, right, that's right. Our very own Father Jamie has a title. Let's explain, because people yes. are kind of confused. And I'm well, like, well, he's Monsignor Jamie now, and uh, so how does well, that it, go? Well, it's a title. It's no different than any other priest. I'm still a, a parish priest, and you know, I do have a, a job with the bishop, but um, I do everything a parish priest does. And uh, it's an honorary title that the bishop uh, gives to someone, and this year he gave it to seven, uh, uh, priests were made Monsignor but to, to recognize a priest for what he's doing and what he has done and uh, it's a great honor to the parish too. It right. really is, it really is right. because this parish has had a number of Monsignors and Monsignor Burns has been here for a number of years, over 30 years. So it's a great honor for me and my family but also for the parish. Sure. And, and we're happy too because I know a lot of times people don't know all the other things that priests do. It's not like you're napping until Sunday morning, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you guys are doing a lot for people and doing a lot of reaching out so we are are totally excited and your party was off the hook. You guys are going to believe this party that I went to. I had a few of my closest friends there. A few hundred people were there. <laughs> Literally, it was it was crazy. It was just so much fun. And I could not keep up with one of your friends. I was on the dance floor having a good time. I literally well, had to Well, Tati, we're on television. Don't tell too much. Okay, I won't tell too much. But I literally had to stop and be like, I can't, I can't dance anymore. <laughs> it was a joyful celebration. It was really wonderful. Was. Everyone had a great time. The parish, everyone in the parish came out. It was good. Yeah, the party was great. It was such a celebration. But I got to tell you, even my mom was delighted when you got the title of Monsignor. And I've never even met your mom. I know, but she knows you from the show. She feels like she knows you. She was thrilled. We have a bunch of fans in Boca Raton, Florida. We're coming up in the world breaking bread. My mom has posters of the show all over her cafe. Wow. And she's got people watching us on the website, which is awesome. Absolutely That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, so what's all this deliciousness over here? Well, I have to tell you a little, I didn't make it. Even though maybe I could, but I don't have the time. But I have a cook, and a couple of years ago, our former cook retired, and I was looking for a cook. So there was a woman that comes to church, an Italian lady, and she comes to church every day. And she was a little down in the dumps a number of years ago. Her daughter passed away. So I wanted to try to lift her up a little. I said, Laura, how about cooking in the rectory? And she said, No, 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 I couldn't do it. I can never do it. I said, Yes, she can. So I kind of twisted her arm. Well, it was the best thing to happen. She's, she's a lovely lady. She enjoys coming here. And little did I know, that she makes homemade bread. Wow. Homemade. That's homemade? Homemade from scratch. Wow. Homemade donuts, as she says, donuts, donuts. which are delicious. We're gonna meet her later on in the yes, show, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, I'm excited uh, about that. She's gonna teach me how to make something? Homemade pasta. Perfect. Fettuccine pasta from Perfect. scratch. Well, really on her excited. own little macaroni machine that she brought from Italy. Like a machine, like she cranks yes, it out. Yes, yes, yes. I gotta see this. <laughs> I gotta electric. see this. I'm really excited. <laughs> but we're also doing something different on this episode. This time we're gonna go to one of my favorite places to eat and one of your favorite places to eat. Just one? Just one. I know you have a lot. How am I gonna pick out one? <laughs> All right, I'll try. Should we tell them where we're going? Give them no. a little hint? No. no. Okay. So you guys are gonna have to stick with us. When we come back, I'll be making fresh fettuccine from scratch. And then we'll be going taking you guys around some special places here in Brooklyn. See you then.
Welcome back to Breaking Bread, everyone, and back to Monsignor Jamie's kitchen. And this is Laura, his cook, and I finally get to see all about this fresh pasta made from scratch by Laura herself. Now, when I say from scratch, I mean this is just flour. Flour, water, eggs, and a little touch of salt. Amazing. You knead it all together, you mix it, and you let it rest for about three or four hours. And now, Laura's gonna show us how to form the pasta in her famous pasta machine. Okay, I started. Flour first, make it sure no stick. And then it goes right in that machine. It goes straight in the machine. Which Laura's had for 40 years, I hear. I have the machine for 40 years. Right. Wow. So I'm from this Italy. From she from my husband and four children. I bring the machine. So you brought your husband? <laughs> Your four children, children and the pasta machine. The in pasta. that order or the pasta machine first? <laughs> the pasta machine is Then first. your husband. <laughs> she needs a pasta machine for that big family. <laughs> My goodness. So now you do this what? How many times about? Three, four. Three, four times. So after you do it three or four times, you then have to cut it? No, or I don't shape cut. It? I just dry you a little. Okay. Oh. So it goes through this machine three, four times, but maybe even more until we get it to this consistency, which is this perfectly flat and ready to cut pasta, right, Father So now Jamie? we're gonna try it and cut it, right? We'll put this. Yeah. Oh, you wanna cut it? Now yeah. we're gonna cut it. Okay. Put so there's another piece, piece to the pasta making machine. Just okay. clip that right on. So that goes in to shape it okay. and to cut it's amazing. it. Amazing. Okay. 40-year-old pasta machine. They don't make things like that anymore. Look. That's something you buy one time. Okay. One hand seat in the way. Very oh, nice. Yeah. Now, how long will you have to let this sit before we can boil it and cook it? A really can stay up for tonight, so that's okay. Two hours, three hours. Two, three hours. hours. And you let it dry up a little bit. That's it. Monsignor Jamie, you are so lucky to have fresh pasta around. That's amazing. Not only do I eat fresh pasta, I have fresh tomatoes. Ooh. She jars her own, she grows her own tomatoes during the summer, and then she jars them, and all year long we have fresh yeah. tomatoes. Delicious fresh tomatoes. <laughs> well, you know what? When we come back from break, we're gonna try this fresh tomato sauce and this fresh from scratch pasta, and we're gonna tell you how it is. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Thank I can't you, wait Laura. to taste it. We'll be right back. Let's not waste any time. We just can't let this sit here you like ready? this. Yes. And I've been busy all day preparing it. I, know, I saw you working. <laughs> Monsignor was breaking a sweat over there. I, I just always... sat here and observed. <laughs> I love making homemade pasta. It's one of my favorites. Gosh. A little fresh uh, Parmesan oh, cheese on there. This is how you're living every day. Just... Well, not every day. This is some Most fabulousness days. right here. <laughs> let me know how it tastes. Good is not enough of a word for this. But I'm being honest, this is fantastic. But I'm gonna take it easy. I think what I'll do is I'll just pack some and take it home with me. Because we've got a lot more to cover on this episode. We're gonna go to one of your favorite places. Right. And one of my favorite places. But we're not gonna give it all away. So stay with us and we'll be on our way. After a few more bites of food. After a few more. And a little sip of wine. Yeah. Yes, Tati. I have a lot of favorites, as you know. Mm -hmm. But this is one of my old favorites. So when you say old, we're talking how old? Like 20 years. Wow. 
Wow, let's get in there. I gotta see this place. Let's go. Well, Tati, here we are at Giando's on the water, and we're here with Diana, who's the manager here at Giando on the water. And we've been, I've been coming a long time, right, Diana? 22 years, exactly. Wow. wow. I met uh, Monsignor Jamie before he actually was a priest. Okay, he wow. He actually had his ordination party here. And then he had his Monsignor party here. Wow. And who knows? You never know. Well, let's not go there. What parties did you have? Wait a second. Well, over I the years. To, and it wasn't here. Well, my first party I was, was my communion party, right? Yeah. Okay. Like 22 years ago. <laughs> Confirmation party. Confirmation, Confirmation okay. party. <laughs> but the food here is, is absolutely fabulous. And uh, I think we have a little appetizer here. Yeah. Yes, we have a little. Uh, Shrimp Teresa, okay. named after the owner's mom. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Shrimp Teresa was... The owner, Anthony. Anthony Yes, Perdenti. Anthony Prudenti. His okay. mom was in the kitchen 40-something years ago and came up with this Shrimp Teresa dish and baked clams, wow. which is an Italian delicacy. Nice cool. Yes. So tell me what, you know, how did you guys first meet? What was your first impression of Monsignor Jamie? Actually, he came in and I said, mm -hmm, nice looking guy. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, he came in and uh, he wanted to book a party mm -hmm. for another priest who was becoming a Monsignor. Okay. Father David, mm. Monsignor David. Mm -hmm. And uh, he arranged the whole party. And that was really our first party because we were newly we're open. New, right. Yes. But then I know uh, I'm not the only priest that comes here. No. <laughs> we have many priests. And the bishop comes and we've been uh, blessed. A lot of sisters. A lot of sisters here. come, yeah. and uh, there are many nights that there's many sisters and many priests, <laughs> and we don't know if we should say hello or genuflect. <laughs> well, you never have to say but for me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> because I knew you before you were a priest. <laughs> but they have so, many items, uh, many oh. things on the menu that are great. And uh, Anthony Pedenti, who's the owner, he likes to fish, and a lot of times when he goes out fishing, he brings back fresh fish, and you, you, wow. you, you get it and on the you menu. And you can get it here. Oh, right, 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 yes, right, right. He brings it right. in and ice, and yeah. they actually. The best fish. That's awesome. fresh. And that's what I call first class home personal yes, service. Yes, yes. Exactly. Well, between your large population of religious people who eat here and having really good food doesn't hurt. This shrimp Teresa is really delicious. Excellent. Very Excellent. good. Enjoy. But we're also gonna get into the kitchen. And what are we gonna cook in the kitchen? One of your favorites, right? Mm -hmm. What is it, Monsignor? That penne alla vodka. One of my favorite dishes here. Well, I can't wait to get in there. And if you think Laura's pasta was great, mm -hmm. wait till you taste this. Okay, I won't tell Laura that you said that. <laughs> oh, please. I'll be searching for a cook in the restaurant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get in there. Well, we're going to go in the kitchen and prepare some uh, pasta. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows where everything is. He knows where it is. Just follow him, right? He knows, he knows. I can do that. I can do that. So, so ready? I'm ready. Let's Thank go. you, Okay, Diana. let's go. I'll take you in there. Well, great. You actually, take over. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're here in Giando's Kitchen, Father Jamie's favorite restaurant in Brooklyn. And this is Manny, the chef here. And tell me what you're going to make again. Penne alla vodka, right? Yes. Yeah. I think Manny's going to show me, but I mean, he's, he's going to do you. most of it. OK, well, I can assist. <laughs> I'll hand you guys stuff. Okay. You want <laughs> this is one of your, I'll help, yeah. This okay. is one of your favorite yes, dishes. Yes, it's one of the well-known dishes. It's one of my favorites. Awesome. Okay. Let's do it. Olive oil, please. Olive oil. Olive oil. Extra virgin or regular? Extra virgin. Extra virgin. Extra virgin. <laughs> A little onions. Okay. Sauteing the onions and a little olive oil. So you let them saute a little bit? Yes. Nice. So they become uh, transparent. Yeah, right? like I got a little brown, you know. And now I see you have uh, butter also. Are you going to use that yeah, I'm later on? Yeah, I'm Okay. Now the second butter one we'll be using oil. the prosciutto. The prosciutto. I tell you, prosciutto and onion saute together. You the like smell, that. oh. Yeah. You smell it already, right? It smells incredible. Everything smells yeah. good. A little butter? Yes. Butter. Okay. I thought he was going to put all that butter in no, there. No, no. Heart attack to light. <laughs> when I saw that bowl, I was a little nervous. I think. Now can I get vodka? The vodka. vodka. Oh, okay. okay, here we go. You're going to flambe that a little yeah. bit? Oh, here we go. Watch yeah. out. Here it comes. That's the Ooh, part I like. Yeah. Feel that heat? <laughs> Now, if you I notice that. that he took the frying pan away oh, from the fire. Why is that? Well, you don't want the, the whole pot, the, the whole oh, bottle of vodka to go up see, in flames. 
A little heavy cream? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm never quite that adventurous at home trying to get the flames <laughs> going on. A little salt and pepper? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to use a little tomato sauce. Now that's just a regular marinara sauce, right? Yeah. Tomato sauce, plain. No meat. No meat. No meat. No. You see already how as soon as you put the cream and the tomato sauce yeah. in together, it has that little orange, the, flavor, the color changes right away. There you notice, no measurements. No. All by the eye. <laughs> That's when it comes out the best. Oh, yeah. So now it's ready for the pasta. Okay. Right, let's get right. the pasta heated out. Now that pasta's already pre-cooked, right? Yeah, yeah. You always wonder how when you go to a restaurant the pasta comes out so fast. Because it's already pre-cooked and all you do is you blanch it and uh, it's like cooking fresh pasta. Yeah, because you couldn't possibly make fresh pasta every single time well, you got an order in a restaurant. Right, it'll take too long. Take forever, so they right. they pre cook it, and then when the order's ready, because uh, you never know when you go to a restaurant, people are eating appetizers, and all of a sudden they're done and they want their main course. Right. So you have to have the pasta already. People hate to wait. Yeah, they hate <laughs> to wait. You know, I know the restaurant. See how routine. fast the pasta? Just. Uh, yeah, that's all you need. Right. Parmesan cheese. Now. Parmesan cheese. Yeah, no measurements. I love it. No, a little, little this. This is real cooking. <laughs> real cooking. Only time I measure is when I'm baking. Mm, that smells good. It smells awesome. I'm in pasta heaven today. I must say. <laughs> and then you just throw that sauce right on top. Uh, wow, Manny, thank you. A little, a little more cheese. Parmesan cheese on top. Yeah, why not? I know you like it. Usually in the dining room, they always pass that around. Perfect. Well, look at that. There you go, Tati. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Manny. Manny, no thank problem. you. We hate to make you cook and run, but you know, that's <laughs> kind of what we do. <laughs> we have to eat. Yeah. See you later. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, no, how are you? We okay. <laughs> so let me know. What do you think? This is it right here. This is so good. The creamy, the tomatoey. The onion, right with that perfectly al dente pasta. This is good. Delicious. Delicious. Pasta <laughs> I told delicious, you that the delicious. Pasta would be better than the view here. I mean, with the view plus this great food, how could you go wrong here? But save room in your appetite because I still have a couple places to take you. I hope it's not a pasta place. No, we're done with pasta. <laughs> we're done with pasta for the day. But it was all good. Well, Tati, what'd you think? I loved it. The penne alla vodka was delicious, and the view here is spectacular. It's a great place, right? It's a great restaurant. A nice place to have a wedding, too. Perfect New York City wedding spot, I have to say. Have any in mind? Um, no. You just keep praying, and we'll tell my mom about this place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to take you to a place that has food from my country, Ethiopia. You ready to try something a little different? I'm ready. Let's go. So, Monsignor Jamie, finally I get to take you to one of my favorite places. It's about time. I know. <laughs> have you ever had Ethiopian food before? Never. Okay, well, this is Zoma, and it's one of the best places to have it in the city. Let's go. Okay, Monsignor Jamie, so welcome to my favorite pick for our first episode of Breaking Bread this season. Thank you for having me here. It's my first time in the Ethiopian restaurant. All right, well, this is Zoma, and this is the owner, Heno. Nice to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. So, Heno, how long have you guys been open? Zoma has been open for three and a half years now. Okay. And it's going strong, and um, we're hoping to have many more years. Yeah, well, I think you guys are, definitely. And I didn't just pick this place because I'm Ethiopian and it's an Ethiopian <laughs> restaurant. It is one of the best places that you can go out to eat. Everything is very clean and modern in here. I love that. Did you do that on purpose? Sure, I think it's, it's my version of how I should present the food to the uh, 21st century. Right. So therefore, I even here in the appetizer that mm -hmm. I took the liberty to change what it is a traditional dish of Azifa. Mm -hmm. I paired it with an endive leaf as opposed to serving it in injera because it just it's a different look at an old cuisine. So why don't you explain to everyone at home exactly what Azifa is? Because of course I know, but I know all of you don't know. <laughs> Azifa is uh, boiled lentils, mm -hmm. and it also has um, jalapeno and chopped onion, and also some lemon juice. 
Right. And here it's paired with uh, an endive leaf because mm -hmm. it's a little bit more acidic, so therefore the, the endive will help in the, the eating of the food. Um, the, this, the mid sauce that's in the middle is uh, jalapeno uh, paste yeah. and it's a little bit of garlic powder and uh, salt. Yeah, so it's kind of like a little salsa of ours, mm. right? There you go. Yeah. Coming from an Italian household, we've always eaten lentils all the time, so I love one of my favorite dishes also. you got to try this. this is, oh, I love Azifa. I've never had it in an endive leaf, so I'm excited to try this. But Can't wait. Very nice. Yeah. Very yes, nice. you have outdone yourself with this one. Thank you. This is delicious. I mm. see what you mean by clearing the palate. Exactly. That's one of the main reasons why I like to eat azifa before diving into a full Ethiopian mm. meal because it cleanses the palate before you get a whole new rush of other flavors and colors and you're gonna love it. But I have to say, it has a little bite to it. It does. It's the jalapeno. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And the like diet helps spicy. with that as well. Yeah, very good. Kind of a contrast to it. Absolutely. So flavorful. I taste the garlic, I taste mm. the lemon, the lentils. Excellent. Not too soft, which I can't stand it when they're too soft. So this <laughs> is perfect. Al dente. A little al, de <laughs> al, al dente lentils, exactly. Exactly, wonderful. So what are we going to make today? Uh, we're going to make our house special, which is Zuma tips. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in the kitchen and prepare for that, and I'll meet you guys in there. Great. Okay, Sounds great. Good. All right. We'll continue to clean the palate. Thank you. Thank right. you. Now, is it true, Tati? We do eat everything with our hands? Yeah, we do. It's a different experience, but I think I'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. I'm always in the game for a new experience. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll eat a little more, and then I guess we'll go help Pan out. Okay, guys, we're in the kitchen with Hanok, and he's gonna make an Ethiopian specialty, which is one of my favorites. It's kind of like a sauteed beef, but I'll let you explain it a little bit better. Sure, uh, we're gonna make our house special, which is uh, beef tenderloin. That's what we refer to as tips, is the, the stir fry that you refer to. Exactly. Uh, we're gonna start with fresh uh, jalapeno, uh, sweet onion, and some tomatoes. We also have some spices that we've ground up already, which uh, has different uh, garlic powder, salt, and paprika. We also have some dried rosemary, uh, garlic powder again, and some salt, and I have some uh, berberi, which is uh, a bird eye chili paste. Yes, uh, nice and good spicy. Stuff. Nice and spicy. <laughs> it gives it that kick. Yes. yes. So let's get started. So let's get started with the uh, fresh onion. We already uh, heated the oil and a little bit of the. Uh, Jalapeno, get that going. And one of the keys to good tips is a really hot pan, right? That's true, yeah. like any tips for that yeah. matter. You gotta start with a hot pan, otherwise uh, you just soak up the oil and not make any tips yeah. or stuff. It won't be like fried. Yes, yeah. so we're using a fresh uh, cutting cubes uh, beef tenderloin and just put that. And then a little bit of the uh, spices. A little bit of the dried rosemary. And then give it a toss a little bit. Just like a quick dish. Yeah. And then stir fry. Stir fry. Yeah, kind of Ethiopian <laughs> stir fry. Yeah. But you'll be surprised at the taste because we've got a lot of different flavors going on over there. So when it all comes together, it's just. Yeah, it's. Uh, and the key is to uh, the fresh ingredient and start with the fresh ingredient, exactly. which we do. Clearly, there are no cans, <laughs> no bottles, no nothing in yeah. but Everything is fresh here. And then at the end, as it gets brown, we just add the uh, bird eye chili. There you go. And let it cook through. It's a nice blend of spices. Then. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, I, a lot of people say it's spicy, but I think I rather refer to it as flavorful spicy, right. rather than just uh, burning your palate together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the good thing about Ethiopian food, it's not just heat. We've got, I mean, when he says spice blend, we're probably talking tens and tens of different flavors in there. It's not just like two or three different things. So you don't just get heat, you get a lot of flavor. That's it. So we'll give this about five minutes to just cook through, and we're done. So we'll plate that and have it uh, for lunch. Now, what would you serve it with? Any uh, we serve it, uh, uh, Yes. Actually, you know, uh, which are very uh, different than most traditional African uh, cuisines. Ethiopian cuisine doesn't use a lot of starch, like rice or pasta. Right. We use what's called injera. 
Kunjara is made out of, uh, um, for lack of a better word, I would call it grain, uh, F, but it's not grain. As a very matter of fact, fine it's, grain. Yes, yeah. it's actually from the grass family. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's very fine, it's very uh, spongy in a sense, and it really works well with the cuisine because most of our cuisine, unlike this one, is in a stew form. So since we eat in our hands, with our hands, it works well with the... Uh, it absorbs with the all the juice and oh, the flavors delicious. and everything. It's delicious. That's great. I have to say, this is a first for me. Yeah, first? I can't wait for you to try it. I'm really excited for him to try Just a couple of tomatoes. It's and perfect. You're ready to go. And I like my tips. This is not cooked all, all the way through. I like it a little bit rare in the middle. It's still tender and juicy. Yes. So we'll let that cook down just a bit more. We'll be ready to go. Okay. I'm excited. You're going to love this. Oh, it's I can't looks wait. great. It tastes <laughs> even better. Let's go. Okay. Now, Kathy, you know what he forgot? Hmm. The forks. Well, that's the thing. We don't use any forks in Ethiopian food. We eat with the bread, which is called injera. So oh. not only do you eat, is it communal eating, but we're eating with our hands, too. Oh, so what do we have here? So, of course, this is the beef that we cooked called tips. And then traditionally, this is how food is served. Like This is a little collard greens, a little tomato salad, a little mild beef, mild chicken. We even throw an egg in there. Well, whole, it's delicious. Whole egg, yeah, okay. it's absolutely delicious. So dig in. So you just take it, just oh, kind okay. of like a little. Oh, all right. And then. Mm. How good is that? Did that I tell you you'd love this? Try something more mild. Okay. Mmm. It's almost like a stew. Mm hmm. And the bread absorbs all the flavors. After you've eaten all of this off the top, the bread on the bottom has just been soaking in all the juices from the stew and the dips, and you get to eat that too. That's like the surprise ending of the whole dish. It's fabulous. Do you like it? It's delicious. I knew you'd love it. <laughs> you guys have to check out Zoma for yourselves too. And visit us on the web at netny.net slash breakingbread. I'm Tati. And I'm Monsignor Jamie. See you next time on Breaking, breaking Bread. bread.